Hello, welcome to another video on curve sketching. In this video, we're going to talk about concavity and inflection points. Now, we're going to do this by continuing an example from the first derivative test video. Uh, we dealt with this function here, f of x, which is uh, 3x to the fifth minus 5x cubed. Now, what we did in that video was we tried to find critical values, to find local maxes and local mins. Well, f prime, we took the derivative, we got 15x to the fourth minus 15x squared. I'm just going to quickly go through this. If you don't, if you have not seen that video, please go watch that so you know where I'm coming up with these things. Now, we found that the critical values in that video were 0, negative 1, and 1. We then plotted that on a number line, and what we found was that we had a local max at negative 1, 2. Remember, this is the actual point. Uh, and we, it was a local max because it's going up and then it's going down. Now we had nothing happening at zero because we were going down and then we're going down again. So nothing happened. And then at one, we had a local minimum because we're going down and then we're going back up. Now if you write this information down in intervals in terms of increasing and decreasing, we know that we're increasing from negative infinity all the way out to negative one and then we are increasing again from 1 to infinity. We're decreasing from negative 1 to 1. So the first derivative test gave us all of this information. So could we sketch a graph based off the information given? Well, sort of. So let's see what we can do. This is all the important information that we gathered from the first derivative test. So if let's start with a graph. What I'm going to do is I'm going to plot, plot the local maximum at negative 1, 2. I'm going to plot the local minimum at neg or, uh, 1, negative 2. And then I'm going to plot some other additional points, because the first derivative test only gave me these points. Um, so let's plot 0, 0. All I'm going to do now is start plugging some x values into the function. So if I were to plug in x equals 0, I'd get this point. Next, I'm just going to plot some other points, uh, like point 0.7, which would be somewhere around here. Uh, these are just some additional points. I think uh, 1.4 and negative 1.4. So if I plot all those points, this is what I get. Here is that negative 0.7. Here's a positive 0 0.7, 1.4, and so on. So again, this is just to help me get an idea of what the graph looks like. Now, since I know that I'm increasing and decreasing on certain intervals, I can connect dots based on that. So, for example, I know that I'm increasing to negative 1. I have to go all the way up to negative 1, and then I stop increasing. After negative 1, I'm decreasing. So I'm just going to be connecting these dots by going down, because that's what this says right here. And then after positive 1, I am increasing, and that's what I get. Now this is a, is a decent sketch, I suppose, of this function up here, but it's a polynomial, and we know that it's supposed to be smooth. So what does it actually look like? That's the graph of 3x to the fifth minus 5x cubed. Now we're pretty close. We did a pretty good job. However, how am I supposed to connect these dots? I mean, I'm not going to do it with this straight line, but notice that this curve right here, it's a little bit above this straight line. Same over here. This little curve here is above my straight line. But down here, it's a little bit below. Here, it's a little bit above my straight line right here. And down here, it's, again, a little bit below this straight line. So how am I supposed to know which side I'm on? So we're going to have four different scenarios when you're connecting two dots, unless you're connecting them with a the straight line like we did right here. But notice that straight lines are rarely going to be how we graph functions. So we want it to be curvy. So here are my four scenarios with curves. I'm going to have two different scenarios when increasing. Our first case is it's going to look something like this. I missed. We get the idea. And then the other one will be like that. So if you think about it, if I were to connect these with a straight line, this is when my graph would go above that straight line. And here, if I had a straight line connecting the two points, this is when it would go below. So what's actually happening here? If you were to take a look at this graph or uh, this line here, the slope here is positive. Here it's positive, but what's happening to the slopes? They're actually getting smaller as time goes on. If the slopes are getting smaller, it means the second derivative 
was less than zero. Over here, the slopes are positive and positive, but they're getting bigger as time goes on. If the slopes are getting bigger, it means the second derivative was positive. Now down here we have the same um, where we're decreasing instead. So we got two decreasing lines. Here we're going to look something like this and like this. I missed. Okay, same, same analysis here. We take a look at the slopes. Here they're negative. Here they're negative, but notice that they're getting more negative. Now when we're saying more negative, we actually mean the second derivative is less than zero. The slopes are getting smaller. And then over here, the slopes, which are negative, but watch, see what's happening is the slopes are actually getting, going towards a positive direction. In fact, it's actually saying the second derivative is positive. Now how do I remember it? I would usually just remember two parabolas. One of them opening down, one of them opening up. What I typically do is I split them in half. Now in this first one, in algebra we would say opens up, calculus we'd say concave, I'm sorry, opens down, wow, can't read, opens down, we would say concave down. And over here we would say opens up, which you would then think concave up. Now concave down means the second derivative is less than zero. Concave up means the second derivative is greater than zero. But notice that it was broken up into four different regions. This region is increasing but concave down. So increasing concave down. This is decreasing concave down. Over here this is decreasing concave up and finally increasing concave up. So if you can remember these four, then you'll know how to connect any two dots using concavity. So let's go back to this graph right here. Let's see what we can do. Let's identify our intervals of concavity. Now from negative infinity, where do we basically change? Because notice here, I'm concave down, right? I look like a parabola going down. When do I change concavity? Right here. Because after this point, I now look like a parabola opening up. I'm concave up. So right here is a change of concavity. And that happened at negative 0.7. Now we'll find ways in other videos of figuring this out. Right now this is just to identify how to identify concavity. So this is concave down from negative infinity to negative 0.7. We are then concave up from negative 0.7 to 0. Notice that after we are concave up, we now turn the concave down again. So from 0, this is 0.7. So then it's concave down again. Oops, not to 1. Uh, messed that up. Sorry, let me erase. Concave down from 0 to 0.7. And finally, we are then concave up again. We look like this parabola opening up from 0.7 to infinity. So what are these points here called? Because they seem special, because they're showing up in these intervals. Those are called inflection points. In order to be an inflection point, you need to be a point on the graph. So you must exist. can't be an asymptote or anything like that. And your concavity must change there. So again, notice here we are concave down, but then after this point, which I'm going to call inflection point, we are now concave up. So it's a change in concavity, and we're a point on the graph. That means this also is an inflection point. So how do we find inflection points? They are pretty much like critical values to the second derivative. And how do we find critical values? We would set the second derivative equal to zero, we would set this or, or figure out when the second derivative does not exist. Now these would be potential inflection points. Like critical values on the first derivative, they were only potential local maxes and mins. We needed to do stuff to figure out whether they really were local maxes and mins. So in part two of the video, we will actually go through this problem again um, from start to finish on how to sketch it using the first derivative test and concavity.